They called Earth a backwater world, a minor planet teeming with simple organisms. To the Galactic Exploratory Guild, Earth was just another point on their star maps, a blue marble with a primitive species, ripe for observation, but not much else. We, humans, weren't even on their radar. That changed when the Cathari came. I was just a journalist, a thrill-seeker by profession, when I first heard rumors of an alien expedition. At the time, I figured it was just another fringe theory, a story meant to fill the headlines of conspiracy sites. But then, reports started coming in. Strange lights in the sky, missing satellites, electromagnetic disturbances that scrambled entire grids. We were left guessing, filling the gaps with speculation, until we weren't. It happened on a crisp night, while I was out at the edge of the Nevada desert. The Cathari ship, a massive oblong silhouette against the stars, descended like a vengeful god. I watched through my binoculars as it hovered, its surface rippling with silver light. The air buzzed with a high-pitched frequency, like a thousand whispers converging in one moment. It wasn't until I felt my chest vibrate, like my very bones were being shaken, that I knew this was no human aircraft. I felt it first, the shift, the crackle. A wave of pressure washed over the area, and my breath hitched. My vision blurred, and suddenly, my senses expanded. I could feel the pulsing thrum of the ship, the static it exuded, almost as if it was reaching into the earth itself. But then, the lights flickered, and the ship shuddered in the sky. The silver sheen on its surface darkened, the smooth panels blistering as if subjected to an invisible fire. A roar filled the night, an inhuman sound that seemed to echo from the depths of that ship. Its descent turned chaotic, jerking left, then right, as it veered away from the desert's edge. Flames erupted, and I could see chunks of metal splintering off. It was crashing. I bolted toward my jeep, adrenaline making my hands fumble as I scrambled for my camera. I needed to document this. I had to be the first to record humanity's encounter with intelligent life, no matter how hostile it appeared. But as the ship plunged into the distant mountains, my instincts screamed at me to run, to get out of there. The Cathari had come to Earth, but something about our world was tearing them apart. I spent the next few hours driving back to civilization, my head spinning with what I had seen. When I arrived at the station, the place was abuzz. Footage was already being pulled from satellites, and news agencies were scrambling to piece together the story. I wasn't the only one who'd witnessed the alien ship's crash. Reports were flooding in from every major observatory and radar facility. Earth wasn't some insignificant blue dot anymore. We were on the map but not in the way anyone expected. The next morning, the world was changed. Governments convened emergency meetings and military forces were mobilized. There was no hiding the truth. Alien life was real, and it had made a disastrous appearance. The official explanation was thin, something about an atmospheric anomaly disrupting their systems. But the deeper I dug, the more unsettling the truth became. I tracked down an old contact, a man who had once been an engineer for one of the government's deep space projects. He owed me a favor, and with a promise of anonymity, he agreed to talk. We met in a crowded bar, a place where no one would care enough to eavesdrop. What did you see out there? I asked, keeping my voice low. He took a deep breath, eyes darting around before leaning in. Whatever they were, they didn't expect Earth to be like this. Our atmosphere, there's something in it something they didn't account for. I frowned. What do you mean? Look, Earth's unique, right? We've got this blend of gases, magnetic fields, atmospheric layers, things we take for granted. But for them, it's a death trap. Their tech doesn't work here. Their shields, their engines, everything falls apart. And it's not just our atmosphere, it's something deeper, like Earth's rejecting them. He was right. Reports were pouring in about smaller Cathari craft experiencing malfunctions, their systems overheating and structures warping as if Earth itself was hostile to their presence. Some called it atmospheric incompatibility. Others speculated that our planet's magnetic fields created a resonance that disrupted their systems. But my contact's words stuck with me. It's like Earth's rejecting them. As I drove back home, the city's skyline loomed in the distance, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were missing something, 
some crucial detail that the Cathari had overlooked, and I wasn't the only one who felt it. The government's response was too quick, too rehearsed. It was as if they knew what was happening, but weren't telling us. Days turned into weeks, and more ships arrived. Each one faced the same fate. The Cathari weren't just explorers anymore, they were desperate. And their desperation grew as they realized Earth wasn't the welcoming, unassuming world they'd expected. Whatever they were looking for, whatever they wanted, our planet wasn't going to give it up easily. I began to dig deeper, interviewing experts, sifting through classified documents, and chasing leads that most would have dismissed as conspiracy theories. But the deeper I went, the darker the truth became. Earth wasn't just a planet to the Cathari. It was something else entirely, something far beyond our understanding. And if they couldn't survive here, what did that mean for us? The closer I got, the more dangerous it became. But I was in too deep now. This was bigger than any story I'd ever covered, and the truth was, I didn't know if I would survive uncovering it. The chaos intensified, and despite my training, the overwhelming sense of the unknown gripped me tighter. I wasn't just a scientist at this point. I was an investigator in an unfolding mystery that threatened to shatter everything I believed. I kept my breathing steady as I clung to the side of the transport vessel, staring out the window at the hostile landscape of Earth. For all its beauty, it felt as if the planet itself was rebelling against us, pushing back in ways our scans had never predicted. The crash landing had scattered our team across the vicinity of the shuttle's wreckage. From my position, I could see the torn metal glinting in the sunlight as thin streams of smoke rose from the remnants. I heard shouts, garbled communications coming through my earpiece, and the distant hum of life support systems struggling to operate in the thick atmosphere. Team, status report, I barked into my comms unit. Static. I cursed under my breath and tried again. If anyone hears me, report in. It was imperative we regrouped. There was something fundamentally wrong here, something that no preliminary exploration data could have prepared us for. My mind raced, remembering the strange readings, the anomalies we had brushed off as mere glitches. Now, those very discrepancies felt like warning signs we had ignored, and the weight of that oversight hung heavily in the air. A voice finally broke through the static. Larissa, this is Soren. I'm pinned under some debris, can't move southeast of the crash site. Relief mixed with dread. Hang in there, Soren. I'm coming to get you. I secured my gear, scanning the terrain. The readings on my visor were distorted, showing conflicting temperatures and bioactivity levels that shouldn't have been possible. Earth was throwing everything out of balance. As I navigated through the wreckage, my eyes locked onto strange shapes, moving within the trees, their movements almost serpentine. I paused, squinting through the haze, but they disappeared as quickly as they'd appeared. The feeling of being watched grew stronger. Every instinct told me to turn back, but I pushed forward. I found Soren beneath a chunk of the hull, his face pale but determined. His right leg was crushed under the twisted metal, and his visor was cracked. I could see the panic in his eyes as he struggled to maintain composure. I got you, I said, trying to project confidence. I activated the micro-lifters embedded in my gloves, gripping the metal as it groaned and shifted. With a final pull, I freed him, dragging him to safety. Soren gritted his teeth against the pain, his face slick with sweat. What the hell's going on, Larissa? We've seen storms, heat waves, but this feels different, like the planets. Reacting to us, I finished. I know. I bandaged his leg my hands moving with practiced efficiency. But my mind was on the strange readings from earlier. The way the land shifted and the air thickened felt like Earth was alive, more so than any of our initial exploration suggested, and the way it seemed to target us made it feel like something, or someone, had triggered its defenses. We need to find the others and regroup, I said, helping him to his feet. His weight leaned heavily on me, but we managed. As we moved, I heard distant shouts, but there was no visual confirmation of who or what they were. The forest was dense, the trees reaching high, their branches entwined like claws stretching toward the sky. Every step we took felt like an intrusion. 
our suits registered fluctuating oxygen levels, spikes of carbon dioxide, and traces of other gases that shouldn't have been there, each breath a reminder that Earth's environment was unpredictable, hostile. As we pressed on, we stumbled upon a patch of ground that looked like it had been recently disturbed. The soil was overturned, and a series of deep impressions, almost like footprints, marked the area. They weren't human. My visor struggled to make sense of their structure, labeling them unknown. Soren's grip tightened on my shoulder. What do you think made these? I crouched down, tracing the edges with my gloved hand. No idea, but they're fresh. I glanced around, scanning the perimeter. We're not alone here. Just as I said it, a low rumble echoed through the forest, followed by a tremor that sent a shiver up my spine. The ground beneath us shifted, and I felt a cold dread settle in my gut. Something was approaching, and it wasn't friendly. Move, I hissed, pulling Soren with me as we hobbled through the dense foliage. The rumble grew louder, and the trees around us shivered as if something massive moved just beyond our sightline. Shadows darted between the trunks, but every time I turned, they vanished. We pushed through a thicket, emerging onto the edge of a cliff. The view took my breath away, sprawling valleys, rolling mountains, and rivers winding like veins through the land. But it wasn't the natural beauty that caught my attention. It was the fleet of alien ships hanging in the sky, their forms warped and cracked. It was as if Earth's atmosphere itself had bent them out of shape, dissolving their structure. I activated my binocular vision, zooming in on the nearest ship. Its hull was corroded, parts of it peeling off in sheets. Sparks flew from exposed circuits, and strange tendrils of gas snaked out from the breaches. The ships weren't just damaged, they were decaying. Soren, do you see this? I whispered. He nodded, his expression grim. It's like the planet itself is tearing them apart. I stared at the ships, piecing together the implications. If Earth's atmosphere could do that to advanced alien technology, what chance did we have? And if this was Earth's way of defending itself, then it meant only one thing, something had triggered it, and we were caught in the crossfire. Before I could speak, a high-pitched wail pierced the air, followed by a blinding flash. I threw myself over Soren as the world around us erupted in chaos. The ground buckled, and the cliff edge crumbled beneath our feet. We tumbled, rolling down the steep incline, branches and rocks tearing at our suits. The world spun, and all I could hear was Soren's scream and the deafening roar of the collapsing earth. The last thing I saw before everything went dark was the sight of one of the alien ships plummeting, flames trailing behind it like a comet. When the call for backup finally came through, the relief was short-lived. We were stranded in the middle of an alien jungle where reality warped and twisted before our eyes. I could feel the atmosphere pressing down on me like a vice, the gravity of this place playing tricks on our minds and bodies. But backup, backup was a lifeline. Fleet Command, this is Survey Team of 47. We have confirmed hostile environmental anomalies, requesting immediate extraction. I tried to keep my voice steady, professional, but there was no masking the undercurrent of desperation. There was a pause, long enough for doubt to start crawling back in. Then came the crackle of the fleet's voice through the comms. Survey Team of 47, we are dispatching units. Extraction Eda, six hours. Maintain position. Six hours. Six hours in this nightmare. I exchanged a look with Valen. His eyes, usually sharp and alert, looked clouded, like he was struggling to keep his thoughts tethered. Six hours. We can make it, I said, trying to convince myself as much as him. Valen nodded. If this place lets us. I could still hear that primal roar echoing through the canyon, the one that had set my nerves on edge. It was like the planet was alive, aware of our presence and reacting to it. It wasn't just the wildlife. The terrain itself seemed to shift and swell, like the ground beneath our feet was alive, pulsing with an ancient, malevolent intelligence. We need to find a spot that's defensible, I said. Somewhere we can hold out until they get here. We moved quickly, scanning the surroundings. Every shadow felt like a threat, every whisper of wind a warning. The trees loomed overhead, 
their branches like skeletal fingers reaching out. And the more we pressed forward, the more I felt something following us, something beyond the creatures we'd seen earlier. It was an instinct, a deep-seated dread that had me constantly checking over my shoulder. Eventually, we found a clearing near a ridge, a vantage point that gave us some visibility, but still enough cover to hide from whatever was lurking. We set up a perimeter using the limited resources we had left. Our gear, once pristine and organized, was now covered in mud and barely functional. Valen checked the energy levels on his plasma rifle. Low charge. I've got maybe ten shots left. Same here, I replied, glancing at the sky, which was darkening to an unnatural shade of red. The air felt charged, like it was building up to something, like the calm before a storm. Stay sharp. We only have to hold out until the fleet arrives. As we settled in, the silence stretched on. It was too quiet, no rustling leaves, no distant animal calls, just the oppressive, suffocating quiet that made every second drag out. And then, faintly, I started to hear it again. That low, droning hum. It was barely perceptible, like a whisper at the edge of hearing. But it was there, and it was growing. Do you hear that? I whispered. Valen tilted his head, his brow furrowing. Yeah, I thought it was the wind, but... It's not the wind. The hum grew louder, reverberating through the ground beneath us. It felt like it was coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. I gripped my rifle tighter, scanning the perimeter, but there was nothing, no movement, no sign of anything. And yet, the sensation of being watched was undeniable. Valen's eyes darted around his fingers twitching on his weapon. It's like the whole place is vibrating. Just as the tension hit its peak, the ground beneath us began to tremble. At first, it was subtle, a faint quiver. But then it intensified, the earth shifting like waves under our feet. We both stumbled, trying to regain our footing. Hold on, I shouted as the tremors grew violent. The trees around us swayed, their branches snapping like brittle bones. The ridge we were perched on began to crack, a fissure splitting the ground right between us. I reached out, grabbing onto a tree root for stability as the earth heaved. Larissa, Valen called out, his voice strained as he struggled to hold his position. I'm fine, I shouted back, even as the ground felt like it was trying to swallow us whole. Just hold on. And then, as abruptly as it had started, the tremors ceased. The forest was still again. But everything felt wrong, like the world had been jolted off its axis. Valen and I exchanged a look. This place, it wasn't just hostile. It was reacting to us, trying to tear us apart. I pulled myself up, dusting off the dirt. We can't stay here. The ground's too unstable. Valen nodded, but his eyes were distant. It's like it knows we're here, like we're not supposed to be. His words sent a chill down my spine. I knew it wasn't just paranoia, this planet, whatever it was, had an intelligence to it, and it didn't want us here. We continued moving, sticking close to the ridge, but staying alert for any signs of shifting ground. The humming sound faded, but I knew it wasn't gone, it was simply biding its time. The air felt heavy, and every step forward felt like walking through quicksand. As we approached a new section of the forest, something caught my eye. At first, it looked like a rock formation, jagged and out of place. But as I got closer, I realized it wasn't stone. It was metal, twisted and charred, half buried in the soil. Valen, look at this. He crouched beside me, his eyes narrowing as he inspected the wreckage. It's a ship fragment. Not just any ship, it's one of ours. The implications hit me hard. This wasn't just an exploratory disaster. Others had come here before us, and they hadn't made it out. Valen's expression darkened as he ran his fingers over the scorched metal, tracing the emblem of the Alliance fleet. This is from decades ago, he muttered, an old reconnaissance model. I scanned the forest, my heart pounding. Why didn't the fleet know? Why didn't they warn us? Maybe they did, and we just didn't listen. Valen's voice was grim. Or maybe they wanted to forget. The silence that followed was like a weight on my shoulders. There were secrets buried here, deep ones. 
and whatever this place was, it had been hiding for a long time. The ground quaked beneath our feet, the tremors rippling through the earth like angry whispers. I gripped the arm of my suit, steadying myself as the rest of the team staggered to maintain balance. When the quake subsided, the air felt heavier, charged with an unsettling tension. The fog had thickened, and visibility had dropped to mere feet in any direction. Report, I ordered, my voice calm but firm. Rodriguez was the first to speak. Seismic activity, localized. That wasn't a natural tremor. His eyes were fixed on the scanner, the frown on his face deepening. Something's moving underground. My pulse quickened. The fog made everything feel claustrophobic, as if the earth itself was closing in around us. We were deep into uncharted territory now, with no sign of where this disturbance originated. Miller adjusted his comms. Command, do you copy? Static greeted us. He tried again, but only the hiss of interference answered. No signal. It felt like the world had swallowed us whole. The only sounds were the distant rumbles beneath our boots and the crackle of disrupted comms. The otherworldly atmosphere of this place made it clear Earth wasn't going to let us leave without a fight. Stay focused, I reminded the team. Keep moving and stick together. We find the source, we find a way out. We pressed on, cutting through the dense vegetation that seemed to claw at our suits. As we moved, the landscape shifted subtly. Trees bent at odd angles, their trunks twisted as if they had grown in agony. The ground pulsed beneath us, rhythmic and alive, as though the planet itself had a heartbeat. What the hell is this place? Rodriguez muttered. Something more than we expected, I replied. And it's not just the terrain. We're being watched. I hadn't said it out loud before, but it was clear. From the moment we'd set foot here, I'd felt eyes on us, watchful, calculating. But this wasn't a simple predator stalking prey. This felt like an intelligence, something ancient and deeply malevolent. Our equipment was picking up strange signals, pulses that seemed almost like language, but with no recognizable pattern. They were short bursts, irregular, and then silence. Whatever it was, it was close. As we pushed forward, the ground split beneath us with a sudden crack. I stumbled, catching myself before I fell into the newly formed crevice. Heat emanated from it, and a faint glow pulsed from deep within. Watch your step, I shouted as Miller barely dodged another fissure. This place is unstable. The ground beneath our feet was crumbling, as if the planet's surface was breaking open to reveal whatever lay beneath. A stench filled the air, like burnt metal and something rotten. It made breathing through the suit's filters almost unbearable. This isn't just geological activity, Rodriguez said, crouching by the fissure. It's like the planets reacting to us. I glanced down at the glowing crevice. Or something's waking up. A shiver ran down my spine as I scanned the horizon. The fog parted briefly, and in the distance, I saw movement, something massive, shifting just out of sight. My heart pounded, and I felt the adrenaline surge through me. It was too big to be an animal and moved with a purpose that sent a chill through my veins. We need to set up a perimeter, I ordered. Miller, sensors at the north and east. Rodriguez, keep tracking the signals. We're not alone out here. As the team dispersed to set up equipment, the earth trembled again, and I felt a deep, echoing sound, like a growl reverberating through the soil. I tightened my grip on my weapon, scanning the surroundings. We were being hunted. Larissa, the signals are intensifying. Rodriguez's voice came through the comms. Whatever's out there, it knows we're here. Then we stay sharp. No mistakes. I watched as Miller finished setting up the sensor, his hands moving quickly, efficiently. But just as he turned to head back to our position, the ground beneath him gave way. Miller, I lunged forward, but it was too late. The earth swallowed him, and his scream was cut off by a thunderous rumble. Rodriguez and I rushed to the edge of the chasm, but there was no sign of him, only darkness. Miller, respond, static filled the line, and I felt a cold knot form in my stomach. Miller, do you copy? Nothing. The chasm pulsed with the same ominous glow, and the air grew colder. 
I stared into the abyss, feeling a wave of helplessness. I had seen many things in my time as an explorer, but nothing like this. This planet, our home, had become a trap. Rodriguez placed a hand on my shoulder, his face pale. We need to move. If we stay here, we're next. I nodded, pushing down the fear clawing at my chest. You're right. We need to find higher ground. We moved cautiously, each step calculated, every noise amplifying the sense of dread. The fog seemed to thicken, and the glow from beneath cast long, eerie shadows. We could barely see a few feet ahead, and every rustle of leaves felt like a threat. Just as we reached a ridge overlooking the crevice, the ground convulsed again, sending us to our knees. I glanced down the slope to see fissures spreading like a spider's web, light seeping through the cracks. This whole area is going to collapse, I shouted. Rodriguez's eyes met mine, and for a moment, I saw the fear we all felt. We need to find a way out, now. As we sprinted uphill, I glanced back one last time. The fissures widened, and for a brief second, I saw something, something massive and serpentine, moving beneath the surface, light by the unnatural light. Whatever this place was, it wasn't just a hostile environment. It was a predator, and we were the prey. We reached the peak of the ridge, catching our breath. The fog shifted again, and as it parted, I saw something in the distance, a structure, standing tall against the desolate landscape. It was impossible, yet there it was, a tower of metal and stone, partially buried and covered in vines. Rodriguez, do you see that? He nodded, eyes wide. Yeah, that's not human-made. We exchanged a glance. This was no longer a reconnaissance mission. We had stumbled upon something much bigger, something that could change everything we knew about Earth. And now, with one of our own gone and our path forward unclear, we had to make a choice. Retreat and leave this nightmare behind, or keep going, deeper into the unknown. The tower loomed in the distance like a specter, its shape cutting through the fog. It was both a beacon and a warning an ancient structure that didn't belong in any record of Earth's history. The vines wrapped around it like skeletal fingers, clinging tightly to its surface as if trying to keep it hidden. I stared at it, my mind racing. We need to get a closer look, I said, tightening my grip on my weapon. If this is connected to the tremors or whatever's hunting us, it might hold some answers. Rodriguez adjusted his equipment his eyes darting between the path ahead and the growing fissures behind us. Agreed. But we need to be cautious. This place is reacting to us. We moved quickly but carefully, descending the ridge and approaching the structure. Every step felt like treading on thin ice as the ground continued to pulse beneath our feet. The fog swirled in unnatural patterns and the temperature dropped, the chill seeping through our suits. As we neared the base of the tower, the air grew thick with tension. The structure was massive, at least thirty stories high, and parts of it were embedded deep into the earth, as though it had been there for centuries, maybe longer. The metal glinted under the faint light filtering through the mist, and strange markings covered its surface, symbols etched in a language that was completely foreign. Rodriguez scanned the symbols with his visor, but the device returned no matches. Nothing in the database. This isn't from any known civilization. Which means it's not human, I murmured. But what is it doing here? The structure's presence only deepened the mystery. Earth was supposed to be humanity's cradle, its home for millennia. And yet, here was evidence that something else had been here long before us. A faint hum emanated from the tower, barely perceptible, but enough to send a shiver down my spine. It felt like the vibrations we'd been picking up earlier, but stronger, more concentrated. Whatever energy this place held, it was alive, aware. Be on alert. We don't know what we're dealing with, I warned. We approached the entrance, a gaping archway covered in overgrowth. The vines seemed almost sentient, recoiling slightly as we drew near, revealing the dark corridor beyond. We hesitated at the threshold. The silence was palpable, as if the world had paused, holding its breath. I glanced at Rodriguez, and he gave me a nod. Together, we stepped inside. The air was cold, and the darkness swallowed us. 
Our suit lights cast narrow beams, light the path ahead. The walls were lined with more of those symbols, and strange mechanisms, ancient and rusted, jutted out at odd angles. It was like stepping into the remnants of a lost civilization, one that didn't belong on Earth. Rodriguez scanned the air again. Atmosphere's breathable, but the composition is off. There's something else here, particles I can't identify. We moved deeper into the tower, and the hum grew louder, resonating through the metal walls. The floor beneath us trembled, and I felt the ground shift, as if the entire structure was alive. It was unsettling. Every instinct screamed at me to turn back, but I couldn't. We needed to know what was at the heart of this place. Do you hear that? Rodriguez whispered, his voice barely audible over the hum. I strained my ears. There was something, a faint whispering, like voices carried on the wind. It was soft, just beyond the edge of understanding. My skin prickled. Voices, I confirmed, gripping my weapon tighter. But they're not human. We pressed on, the passage twisting and narrowing until we reached a large chamber. The ceiling rose high above, and the walls were adorned with more symbols, glowing faintly. At the center of the room was a large, circular platform, covered in a thin layer of dust. This looks like a control center, Rodriguez said, examining the mechanisms. But the tech, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. I stepped closer, scanning the platform. Strange, pulsating lights flickered beneath its surface, and the symbols glowed brighter as I neared. It felt like we were standing in the nerve center of the tower, a place that had been dormant for ages, waiting to be awakened. Rodriguez placed a hand on the panel. It's reacting to us. I think we can access it. Be careful. We don't know what will happen, I warned, but it was too late. He pressed a sequence of symbols, and the platform roared to life. The lights flared, light the room in a blinding flash. The hum intensified, and the ground shook violently. I staggered back, raising my arm to shield my eyes. The air buzzed with electricity, and the whispering grew louder, surrounding us. Suddenly, the platform projected a series of holographic images into the air. Alien landscapes, towering structures, and massive, serpentine creatures moving through the earth. My eyes widened as the realization hit me. This is a map, I said, my voice barely audible over the noise. A map of Earth, before humans. The images shifted, showing the planet in its primordial state. Alien ships descended from the sky, and the serpentine creatures emerged from the ground, interacting with the invaders. The aliens had built these towers as beacons, using the serpents to mine resources and harness the planet's energy. But something had gone wrong, the images turned chaotic, showing the planet erupting in violence as the creatures turned against their masters. They lost control, Rodriguez muttered. The planet, these creatures, fought back. The images faded, leaving us in darkness once more. The hum quieted, and the whispering ceased. The tower had gone silent, but the truth was clear. Earth had been a battleground long before humanity existed and something had been left behind, something that had been waiting. Larissa, this changes everything. Rodriguez's voice was grave. If those creatures are still here, and they recognize us as intruders, we need to warn the others. I moved toward the exit, urgency driving my steps. If Earth itself is a weapon, then we've stumbled into the heart of it. We need to get this information back to command. But as we reached the entrance, the ground quaked again, and the walls groaned, shifting as if the tower was alive. The vines wrapped tighter around the structure, and the passage ahead began to close. Move, now, I shouted, and we sprinted for the exit. The walls closed in, and debris fell from above. We barely made it out before the entrance sealed shut behind us, the tower disappearing beneath the fog. Panting, I looked back at the hidden structure. It was like the earth had swallowed it whole, and the silence that followed was ominous. This isn't just a warning. Rodriguez, it's a trap. We were out in the open again, but the threat loomed larger than ever. The ground continued to tremble, and the fog thickened, the world shifting and whispering around us. There was no turning back now. We had to find a way to survive this nightmare, 
and uncover the truth about the creatures lurking beneath the surface. As we moved deeper into the abandoned city, the silence grew more oppressive. The strange metallic scent lingered, mixing with the acrid odor of dust disturbed by our passage. The architecture, a bizarre fusion of ancient stone and futuristic alloys, seemed to breathe with a weight of forgotten history. Structures rose like jagged teeth, casting long shadows that shifted in the weak, filtered light. Movement, five o'clock, safe whispered, voice tight with tension. I turned, catching the briefest flicker, something slipping behind one of the twisted pillars. I raised my weapon, scanning the area with a built-in thermal sensor, but it registered nothing. It was as if whatever had been there simply vanished. Anything? Finn's voice crackled over the comms. I shook my head, though I knew he couldn't see it. Nothing. But stay sharp. Something's here. We pressed on, our senses on high alert. The city seemed to pulse, an echo of an energy source I couldn't pinpoint. The deeper we ventured, the more I felt like we were descending into a labyrinth designed to disorient and confuse. The map projections flickered, struggling to keep up with the ever-changing layout. Our goal was clear, reach the central nexus. From the data we had retrieved earlier, this nexus was the key to understanding the city's history, and perhaps its connection to the nightmare phenomena. If we could access its mainframe, we might get the answers we desperately needed. But the city was alive, and it wasn't making it easy. We encountered our first obstacle when we reached what seemed like a bridge, suspended over a chasm of sheer darkness. The bridge was a strange, translucent material that shimmered when we approached. Safe stepped forward cautiously, testing it with his boot. The surface rippled, and for a moment, I thought it might collapse beneath his weight. But it held. One by one, we crossed. My eyes remained locked on the darkness below, a part of me expecting something to rise up and grab us. Nothing did, but the feeling of being watched intensified. I adjusted the scanner, expanding its range, and saw the same readings I had witnessed earlier, ghost signatures, energy fluctuations that didn't match anything in our database. Keep moving, I urged, my grip tightening on my weapon. We're close. On the other side of the bridge, we found ourselves in a vast courtyard surrounded by massive columns. The symbols etched into the stone seemed almost familiar now, like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. The city's builders, whoever they had been, had left their mark, and I had the growing suspicion that their story was tied to Earth's own history in ways we didn't yet understand. What do you make of these? Safe asked, running his fingers over the symbols. Finn crouched beside him, tracing the lines with his glove. They look like coordinates, or a map. I stepped closer, examining the symbols. If this is a map, then maybe it's the layout of the city. We need to find a point of convergence. We worked quickly, overlaying the symbols onto our digital map. Sure enough, there was a match, a central hub that seemed to correspond to the location of the Nexus. This way, I said, feeling a flicker of excitement. We were on the right track. But just as we set off, the ground beneath us trembled. A deep, resonating hum filled the air, and the pillars surrounding us began to light up, one by one. The symbols glowed with an eerie, pulsating energy. What the hell, Finn exclaimed, backing away. The vibrations grew stronger, and a low, rumbling growl echoed through the courtyard. The ground cracked, fissures spreading like veins as something massive stirred beneath us. My heart raced as I glanced around, searching for an exit. We need to move, now, I shouted. We sprinted, weaving between the columns as the city came alive. The rumble turned into a roar, and the ground split open, revealing what lay beneath, a network of writhing, metallic tendrils that lashed out, reaching for us. One of them nearly caught Finn, but he dove out of the way, his eyes wide with fear. We reached a narrow passageway just as the tendrils surged, and I pulled Finn through, safe right behind us. The tendrils slammed against the stone walls, sending debris flying, we didn't stop until we were several corridors away, the roars fading into a distant echo. Catching my breath, I glanced back. This city, it's a trap. It's designed to keep intruders out. But why? Safe asked, panting. 
What's it protecting? I didn't have an answer, but one thing was clear. The city was more than just ruins. It was alive, and it had a purpose. And if we wanted to reach the Nexus, we'd have to outsmart it. The passageway led us to another chamber, this one filled with what looked like statues, dozens of humanoid figures made of stone and metal, positioned in various states of action. Some held weapons, others appeared to be shielding themselves, and all of them bore expressions of fear or defiance. What is this place? Finn whispered. I stepped forward, examining the statues. A warning, maybe, or a record. But as I looked closer, I noticed something unsettling. The statues weren't carved. They were molded, frozen in time. Whatever had created these figures had done so in an instant, capturing their terror in the final moments of their existence. Larissa. Safe's voice was barely a whisper. These aren't statues. They're... people. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. The city hadn't just been protecting something, it had been defending itself. We stood in silence, the weight of the truth settling over us. Whatever power lay at the heart of this place, it was more dangerous than we had imagined, and it was still very much alive. We have to keep moving, I said, my voice barely steady. If we want answers, we need to reach the Nexus before it's too late. We pressed on, navigating the maze of corridors and chambers. Every step felt like a gamble, the city's traps waiting for any misstep. But with each turn, the symbols on the walls grew more familiar, guiding us closer to our destination. The Nexus was near, and with it, the answers we sought, answers that, I knew, might change everything we thought we understood about Earth. I pushed through the humid undergrowth, the dense canopy above blocking most of the sunlight. The air was thick, almost suffocating, and each step felt like moving through a swamp. The leaves rustled overhead, the faint whispers of a forest alive, but unnervingly so. With each sound, I felt as if eyes were on me, hidden behind every shadow, studying our every movement. The further we ventured into the heart of the forest, the stranger it became. Trees twisted unnaturally, their bark etched with patterns that looked like jagged runes. Vines hung down like tendrils, swaying as if caught by an unseen breeze. The atmosphere felt charged, like static clinging to our skin, but without the comforting smell of rain. It was an electric tension that set my nerves on edge. We're going the right way, Dr. Navarro said, her voice low. The readings are getting stronger. I glanced at her handheld device, its screen flashing with erratic patterns. Define right way, Doc, because this feels like we're walking straight into the jaws of something. She gave a tight smile. It's exactly that feeling we need to follow. The signals are aligning with the energy anomalies we've been tracking. Yeah, and last time we tracked one of those, it almost ate us. She didn't respond. She didn't have to. We both knew the risks, but there was no turning back now. Something about the atmosphere, the pressure building in the air, the way reality seemed to twist around us, told me we were close to something crucial. The forest path led to a clearing that felt like stepping into another world. The ground was charred, the air still carrying a faint scent of burned foliage. At the center, a massive stone monolith stood, towering at least twenty feet high. Its surface was carved with symbols similar to those etched into the trees, but these were more defined, more deliberate. They pulsed with a faint, eerie light. This is it, Navarro whispered. The source. I approached cautiously, feeling a thrumming in the air as I neared the monolith. My hand hovered over its surface, and a sharp, static-like shock shot through my palm before I pulled back. Careful, Navarro warned, but I'd already felt it. The energy coursing through the stone was unlike anything we'd encountered. It was ancient, raw, and distinctly alien. This must be what's warping the environment, I said. It's like a beacon. Or a warning, she replied. This kind of energy could be causing the disturbances we've seen. Maybe the planet has defenses we don't understand yet. The thought of Earth itself fighting back was unsettling. If it was true, it explained so much, why every attempt to colonize, explore, or even survey the place had ended in disaster. The planet wasn't just dangerous, it was actively hostile. 
We need to map this, she said, setting up a small scanner. Get readings from all sides. As she worked, I scanned the perimeter, feeling the eyes of the forest on me again. This time, it wasn't just paranoia. Something was definitely moving in the shadows, and it was closing in. Navarro, we've got company. She glanced up, eyes narrowing. Can you see them? Not yet. My grip tightened on my weapon as I searched the dense foliage. The forest had gone deathly quiet, the kind of silence that prickled the skin. But they're there. I can feel it. Just then, the scanner emitted a high-pitched beep. Navarro's eyes widened as she glanced at the display. Larissa, this thing, it's a generator. A generator for what? A shield, she replied. It's creating a field around this area, something that disrupts anything foreign. Like us. Exactly. If we can shut it down, maybe we can stabilize the area. Her expression hardened. We don't have much choice. The anomalies are spreading. If we don't shut it down, we might not make it back to the ship. A deep rumble echoed from the forest depths, and a shadow moved fast. Too fast. I raised my weapon, adrenaline pumping as I tried to track the movement. Navarro, how much time do you need? Not long. Just cover me. The shadows thickened and I felt the air grow colder, the chill clawing at my skin. The runes on the monolith pulsed brighter, and the forest seemed to react, vines curling inward like the planet was drawing a breath. Something emerged from the darkness, a shape, its outline blurred, almost like it was camouflaged with the environment itself. But its eyes, glowing a sickly green, were fixed directly on us. Navarro, hurry. She worked frantically, fingers flying over the controls. The ground trembled beneath our feet, and the creature hissed, revealing a mouth full of jagged teeth. It prowled forward, its body shifting, adapting, as if deciding the best way to attack. I aimed, firing a shot that lit up the clearing, the energy blast momentarily blinding. When my vision cleared, the creature was gone. Or so I thought. It reappeared behind us, faster than I could react. It lunged, and I barely managed to sidestep, feeling its claws graze my shoulder. The pain was sharp, but I stayed on my feet, spinning to face it. Navarro, now would be great. Almost there, she yelled. Just a few more seconds. The creature circled, its eyes glowing brighter. It was testing me, searching for a weakness. I kept my weapon trained on it, waiting for the right moment. A sudden flash from the monolith. Navarro had done something, and the light grew blinding, light the entire clearing. The creature shrieked, recoiling, and I seized the opportunity, firing again. The blast hit its mark, and the creature dissolved into the shadows, its scream echoing in the air. Got it, Navarro shouted. The shield's down. We need to move, now. The air shimmered, and the pressure that had built up finally released. I felt a rush of relief as the forest seemed to return to normal, the oppressive atmosphere lifting. But that sense of relief was short-lived. Let's go, I urged, grabbing Navarro's arm as we sprinted back through the trees. The forest still felt hostile, but we had broken through its defenses, for now. As we ran, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. We had tampered with something ancient, something powerful and whatever force was behind it, it wasn't going to let us leave without a fight. The whistling sound had become a constant companion as we moved, a sinister song that clung to every shadowed corner of the dense forest. The trees, now towering above us, seemed to lean inward, their gnarled branches blocking out the weak sunlight that struggled to penetrate the dense canopy. Our path had narrowed to a single file, and the tension was palpable. Soren, at the front, paused frequently, scanning the surroundings with his weapon raised. Each step felt deliberate, as if we were walking through a minefield of unseen dangers. My pulse quickened with every rustle, every creak of the ancient trees. I had to fight to keep my breathing steady, my senses on high alert. There was no denying it now. We were being watched, stalked by something that moved just beyond the limits of our perception. 
We're close to the signal origin, Soren whispered, keeping his eyes ahead. I checked the device in my hand, and sure enough, the readings were spiking. But something was off. The signal seemed stronger than before, almost as if it were guiding us, manipulating our movements. I couldn't shake the feeling that we weren't finding it. It was leading us into a trap. A few meters behind, Calais' fingers twitched at his weapon's trigger. Why do I feel like we're walking right into their nest? I was thinking the same, I muttered, my eyes darting around. Whatever's out there, it wants us to keep moving. The whistling stopped abruptly, replaced by a silence so heavy it pressed against my ears. The forest stilled, and a chill ran down my spine. Soren raised his hand, signaling us to halt. We froze, barely daring to breathe. The air grew colder, and for the first time, I noticed a thin layer of mist curling around our feet, spreading through the underbrush like creeping fingers. This isn't natural, Liara said, her voice barely a whisper. Before I could respond, there was a shudder beneath our feet, the ground vibrating as if alive. The mist thickened, rising higher, and with it came a low, guttural growl. It echoed through the forest, coming from all directions at once. I gripped my weapon tighter, my eyes scanning the swirling fog. Shapes moved within it, dark, slithering things, their forms shifting like smoke. Hold your positions, Soren barked, but even his voice carried an edge of uncertainty. The growl intensified, and suddenly a figure leapt from the mist. It moved fast, too fast. Before we could react, Callie screamed, a blur of claws and fangs crashing into him, dragging him down into the mist. His cries were swallowed by the growl, replaced by a wet, tearing sound. No, Liara aimed her weapon and fired into the fog, the blasts lighting up the shadows. But it was useless. Calais was gone. Soren grabbed my arm, pulling me back. We need to move, now. We ran, crashing through the undergrowth as the forest came alive around us. Shadows flickered in the corner of my vision, and I heard more growls, the whispers of movement closing in. The signal on my device went haywire, the screen flashing with a jumble of codes and static. We burst through the tree line and stumbled onto a rocky clearing. The fog was thinner here, but the growls still echoed from the woods. Soren and Liara had their weapons up, scanning the perimeter. My breath came in ragged gasps as I tried to steady myself, checking the device again. It was still blinking erratically, and now the signal wasn't just coming from one direction. It was all around us. This is wrong, I said, wiping the sweat from my brow. This signal is multiplying. It's like there are dozens of them. Or it's spreading, Soren said grimly. Suddenly, a blast of energy ripped through the clearing, striking the ground near our feet. We scattered, diving for cover as the rocky terrain erupted in a shower of debris. I rolled behind a boulder, clutching my weapon as another blast whizzed past my head. Soren and Liara returned fire, their shots echoing across the clearing. They've got energy weapons, Liara shouted. How the hell? I peered out from behind the boulder, catching a glimpse of a sleek, shadowy figure moving between the trees. It was bipedal, with a humanoid shape, but there was something off. Its movements were too fluid, too precise. It fired again, and I saw the energy blast tear through the air. We need to get out of here, I yelled. There's too many. Before I could finish, the ground beneath us rumbled again. The boulder I was hiding behind split in two, and I was thrown back by the force. I hit the ground hard, my vision blurring for a moment. Pain shot through my side, but I forced myself to crawl, scrambling for cover. Soren was next to me in an instant, pulling me to my feet. We're surrounded. I looked around, my heart sinking as more of the shadowy figures emerged from the trees, their eyes glowing an unnatural red. They moved in perfect synchronization, like a well-coordinated unit. I had never seen anything like it. What are they? Liara's voice was edged with fear. Whatever they are, they're not friendly, I said, and they're not letting us leave. As if on cue, the figures began to close in, their weapons aimed directly at us. My mind raced, trying to come up with a plan, but every option seemed to end the same way, surrounded, outnumbered, and outgunned. 
Then, just as they were within striking distance, the forest exploded in a burst of blue light. The figures recoiled, and the mist dispersed, revealing a new presence. A tall, light figure, its form humanoid, but clearly not of this world. It radiated energy, and the hostile figures hesitated, their advance halting. What is that? Liara whispered. I couldn't answer. I could only watch as the light being extended its hand, and the shadowy figures retreated, disappearing into the depths of the forest. The blue light pulsed, and for a moment, I felt a strange sense of calm, as if the presence was trying to communicate something. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, the being vanished, leaving us standing alone in the clearing. The forest was quiet again, but the sense of dread remained. Soren's expression was grave. We need to find out what that was. I nodded, knowing he was right. But as we moved forward, a question burned in my mind. Had we just witnessed a savior or something far more dangerous? I couldn't shake the unease that had settled deep in my bones since we discovered the remains of the scout team. My mind raced, fitting together fragments of information like mismatched puzzle pieces. The reality was that Earth's ecosystem didn't just react to foreign entities. It felt like the planet itself was thinking, adapting, and worse, it was anticipating us. Our next task was critical, mapping out the underground tunnel systems. From the initial scans, these tunnels sprawled for hundreds of miles, their depth defying logic. They appeared to be carved with precision, and even more disturbingly, some of them seemed to shift locations in real time. How a natural system could do that was beyond any explanation we had. But I had a nagging suspicion. Whatever was at work here was not merely geological. We descended, one by one, into the mouth of a cavern that had a biting, metallic scent. The walls were coated in a slick, pulsing substance that shone faintly, giving off a light that wasn't quite natural. I switched on my headlamp, feeling the beam slice through the dense darkness. The tunnel's walls seemed to breathe in sync with each step we took, like the entire underground was one giant organism. Stay sharp, I muttered, my voice barely a whisper. The silence in these depths was crushing, as if sound itself was afraid to linger. My pulse quickened, every instinct screaming that we weren't alone. The team moved cautiously, scanning every inch of the walls, looking for signs that would indicate these tunnels were made by some terrestrial force. After what felt like hours of descent, we reached a vast chamber, its ceiling arched high above us and obscured in darkness. Strange, light vines hung down, swaying as if touched by an unseen breeze. The floor was littered with skeletal remains, both human and alien. Some of the alien skeletons matched the species we'd encountered before, but others were unidentifiable, their forms grotesque and twisted. The human bones, however, were ancient, far too old to belong to any of our exploration teams. How is this possible? One of the team members, Kane, whispered, his voice laced with disbelief. These bones, they must be hundreds, maybe thousands of years old. I crouched down, running a gloved hand over the skull of one of the human remains. The bones were charred, as if they'd been exposed to extreme heat. It didn't add up. Humanity had never explored Earth's surface like this before. And yet, these bones told a different story. Time works differently here, I murmured, almost to myself. Or, maybe we're not dealing with time as we understand it. Kane's eyes met mine, a flash of fear in them. Are you saying? I cut him off. I don't know what I'm saying. But whatever it is, Earth has been hostile to outsiders for longer than we realized. The team fell silent. We had come here to study, to find answers, but every step seemed to deepen the mystery. As we moved through the chamber, the temperature dropped sharply. Frost formed on our visors, and the air became thick and heavy, pressing against our lungs. My breath fogged up the visor, and I fought to keep my breathing steady. Suddenly, our comms crackled to life with a static-filled message. The voice was distorted, barely audible through the interference. Evacuation imminent. Protocol Alpha. The signal cut out, replaced by an eerie silence. Our base camp was supposed to be secure, its communication system shielded against interference. If they were reaching out to us now, something had gone terribly wrong. 
We need to head back, I said, motioning for the team to turn around. Whatever's happening at the surface, we have to regroup. We started our ascent, retracing our steps. But the tunnel didn't lead us back the way we had come. Instead, the walls seemed to shift, the pathways branching into unfamiliar routes. The cave system itself was changing, as if it was trying to trap us. Panic threatened to rise, but I forced it down. Everyone stay close. Follow my lead. The air grew colder, the shadows deeper. I could feel the weight of the cavern pressing down, as if the mountain above was collapsing inward. The vines that had hung motionless now writhed, curling and uncurling, blocking paths and opening others. We moved quickly, but each turn seemed to lead us further into the maze. I scanned my map, but the terrain no longer matched. It was as if we were caught in a living labyrinth, one that could shift at will. This isn't a natural cave system, I muttered. It's a trap. Kane's voice came through the comms, tense and edged with fear. Larissa, we're not alone down here. I spun around, my light sweeping the tunnel. Shadows danced, and for a brief moment I saw movement, something slithering along the edge of the light. I squinted, my eyes straining to make sense of the shape, but it vanished too quickly. Stay calm, keep moving, I ordered. But inside, every nerve was on high alert. Whatever was down here with us, it wasn't human. And it wasn't like anything we'd encountered before. The path opened into another chamber, this one even larger. The walls were covered in markings, alien script, and among it, symbols that resembled ancient human languages. They told a story, one of invasion and war. But the invaders hadn't been human, they had come to Earth, and Earth had fought back. It had adapted, twisted, and transformed into something beyond our understanding. What if Earth isn't just hostile? Kane asked, his voice barely a whisper. What if it's sentient? The thought chilled me. I had always considered Earth's hostility as a natural defense, an evolutionary quirk. But if it was more than that, if the planet itself was aware of our presence, it meant we weren't just dealing with an environment, we were dealing with an intelligence. An intelligence that had been watching, waiting, and planning for millennia. As the realization sank in, the ground beneath us trembled. The walls shifted, the vines lunging as if alive. We had to move, and fast. Whatever was coming for us wasn't going to let us leave this place alive. The tremors beneath our feet grew stronger, turning the ground into an unstable, shifting mass. It was as if the earth itself was breathing, pulsing with a rhythm that resonated through my bones. I pushed forward, leading the team deeper into the tunnel system, trusting my instincts to find a way out. But the deeper we went, the more the walls closed in, warping and reshaping like muscle tissue tightening around a wound. Keep moving, I barked, my voice bouncing off the slick walls. We have to find an exit. The air was colder now, each breath I took feeling like ice settling in my lungs. The tunnel's surface seemed to ripple, and the vines, those strange, light tendrils, began reaching for us, brushing against our suits with an eerie, electric hum. Kane and the others stayed close, their eyes darting nervously. I could feel the fear growing, but we had no choice but to push on. Whatever this is, it's alive, Kane muttered, his voice low. The whole tunnel is reacting to us. I had suspected as much, but hearing it spoken aloud made the reality sink deeper. Earth wasn't just reacting like a defensive organism, it was responding with intent, and we were trapped inside its living labyrinth. We had become prey. As we pushed through another narrow passage, a burst of light erupted ahead, light a vast, open chamber. I signaled for the team to stop, taking a moment to scan the space. The chamber was enormous, its walls lined with thick, pulsating tendrils that glowed in unison. At the center, a massive structure jutted from the ground, an intricate web of crystalline formations that pulsed in tandem with the tunnel walls. What is that? Kane asked, his voice tinged with awe and dread. It looks like a nerve center, I whispered, the realization hitting me like a shockwave. The entire underground network, the shifting pathways, the hostile vines, everything was interconnected, controlled by this central hub. The Earth was operating like a sentient organism, and this was its brain. 
but the implications were more than just frightening. It meant that Earth's hostility wasn't just a reaction to our presence. It was a calculated strategy. The planet, or whatever intelligence was controlling it, was aware of us, and it had developed mechanisms to keep intruders at bay. Could this be what killed the scouts? Kane wondered, his eyes glued to the structure. It has to be, I replied. It's like a defense mechanism. The planet didn't just fight back, it lured them in. We had to destroy it. If we wanted any chance of surviving, we needed to sever the connection and shut down whatever intelligence was controlling this labyrinth. I scanned the area for a weak point, something we could use to bring the structure down. The crystalline formations were protected by a lattice of organic material, a protective shell that seemed impenetrable. But there had to be a way. Larissa, look. One of the team members pointed to the far side of the chamber. A small opening led into a passage that glowed with a different hue, a deep, ominous red that contrasted with the greenish light of the vines. That might be an access point. I nodded, gesturing for the team to follow. We need to be quick. If this is the nerve center, then it'll know we're coming. We navigated through the opening, the temperature spiking as we moved deeper. The walls grew hotter, and the air was filled with a strange, metallic scent, like the aftermath of a lightning strike. The passageway expanded, revealing a smaller chamber filled with intricate machinery. It was unlike anything we had seen on Earth, a fusion of organic and mechanical components that pulsated with energy. This isn't human technology, Kane said, his eyes wide, or any known alien tech. We need to disable it, I said, pulling out my toolkit. If we can shut this system down, we might be able to escape the labyrinth. Kane and I worked quickly, analyzing the machinery. It responded to our touch, the vines twitching as if in pain. It felt like we were performing surgery on a living being, and every move seemed to provoke a response. As we pried open a panel, a surge of energy pulsed through the chamber and the ground beneath us began to tremble violently. Hurry, Larissa, Kane urged. It knows what we're doing. My hands moved faster, pulling at wires and tearing through the organic matter that held the machinery together. The tremors grew stronger, and the vines lashed out, trying to force us back. It was like being in the center of a hurricane, every sense on high alert as we fought to dismantle the system. Finally, I found it a central node pulsing with bright red light. I drove my blade into it, severing the connections. The entire chamber shuddered, the walls rippling as the energy began to dissipate. The vines shrieked, their light fading as they recoiled from the machinery. We did it, Kane shouted, relief washing over his face. But our victory was short-lived. The chamber began collapsing around us, the ceiling caving in as the tunnel system lost its cohesion. Whatever intelligence we had disrupted was retaliating, and it was determined to bury us alive. Move! Get back to the main tunnel, I yelled, shoving Kane and the others forward. We sprinted through the collapsing passageway, dodging falling debris and evading the thrashing vines. The ground cracked beneath us, threatening to swallow us whole. I pushed ahead, my heart pounding as the exit came into view. We burst out of the collapsing chamber, the roar of destruction echoing behind us. The tunnel walls continued to shift, but the vines had lost their hostility, receding like an animal retreating from its wounds. Whatever we had done had disrupted the system, but I knew it was only temporary. This place is going to bury itself, I said, panting. We need to get back to the surface. The team nodded, and we raced through the now dilapidated tunnels. The paths had become erratic, but they no longer shifted with the same intent. We had weakened the intelligence, at least for now. As we neared the exit, the ground beneath us quaked violently, a final attempt to seal us in. But we managed to push through, emerging into the open air, just as the tunnel collapsed behind us. We stumbled into the daylight, exhausted but alive. The world above was eerily quiet, and the sky had taken on a strange, shimmering quality. 
Earth's hostility hadn't ended, it was merely regrouping, adapting once more. And as I looked out over the landscape, I knew our fight was far from over. The descent into the cavern was like slipping into the veins of an ancient beast, and every step echoed against the cold, stone walls as we delved deeper into Earth's secrets. The air turned stale and colder, the walls slick with moisture that shimmered under the dim lights of our helmets. My breath formed small clouds, each exhale a reminder of the increasingly hostile environment we were entering. The silence was broken only by the occasional drip of water falling from some unseen crevice above. My team's movements were careful, deliberate, as if we all sensed that the very ground beneath us might be waiting to betray us. The sensation of being watched grew more intense, but this time it felt closer, more palpable, as if the darkness was not empty but alive, crowded with eyes that we could not see. Larissa, readings are picking up something unusual ahead. Finn's voice was steady, but I caught the undercurrent of unease in his tone. What kind of readings, I asked, slowing my pace. My eyes scanned the darkness, light only in brief flashes from our lights. Energy signatures, but they're off the charts, like nothing we've ever encountered, he said. It's almost like a pulse. I tightened my grip on my weapon. Keep moving, but stay alert. As we advanced, the walls around us started to shift. Strange patterns emerged, markings that looked neither natural nor man-made. They were too precise, too intentional. Geometric shapes and spirals intertwined, glowing faintly as we passed by. It was like the walls themselves were alive, pulsating with energy. Everyone, document these patterns, I ordered. This is significant. We paused to capture as much data as possible, scanning the walls and uploading the images back to the ship for analysis. The symbols felt like a language, a warning, or a message left behind. Something about them made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Then the ground trembled. Steady, I shouted bracing myself against the wall. The tremor intensified, and small rocks dislodged from the cavern ceiling, raining down in a cascade of dust. The floor beneath us shifted, as if alive, and the walls began to glow brighter, their pulsating energy building. Get back, Finn yelled, but it was too late. The ground split open beneath my feet. I felt myself falling, my hand instinctively reaching for something to hold on to. I managed to grab a ledge, the jagged stone cutting into my glove. The others scrambled, struggling to maintain their footing as the cavern rearranged itself, forming new pathways and closing off old ones. Larissa, hold on! Rena's voice rang out as she extended her hand. I reached for it, our fingers just barely brushing. The ground trembled again, and I felt my grip slipping. My heart pounded as the darkness below yawned like an abyss. Don't let go, I shouted, but the gap between us widened. I could see the panic in Rina's eyes, the fear that she wouldn't be able to pull me up. But then, with a surge of effort, she managed to grab hold, pulling me back onto solid ground. I rolled onto my back, breathing heavily. Thanks, Rena. Don't mention it, she replied, her voice shaky. Let's keep moving. Whatever's down here, it's reacting to us. The path forward was now a maze of jagged rock formations, leading into a narrow tunnel that twisted into the depths of the earth. The pulsating energy grew stronger, resonating through the walls like a heartbeat. The sensation was overwhelming, almost hypnotic. Finn, any idea what's causing this? I asked as we navigated the tight space. He shook his head, his eyes scanning the readings on his device. It's fluctuating too quickly. Whatever it is, it's beyond our tech's ability to analyze on the fly. Great, I muttered. So, we're blind down here. As we pushed forward, the tunnel opened into a massive chamber. The walls were lined with crystalline formations, each one glowing with an eerie, blue light. The room was vast, the ceiling so high it disappeared into darkness. At the center of the chamber was an immense structure, a monolith covered in the same patterns we'd seen earlier but these were larger, more intricate, as if telling a story. What is that? Rena whispered. I stepped closer, my eyes locked on the towering structure. Looks like some kind of artifact. Finn knelt to scan it, his
his device beeping erratically. The energy levels here are off the charts. This thing is ancient, but it's active. I reached out, my hand hovering just above the surface of the monolith. The patterns seemed to shift under my gaze, like they were alive, trying to communicate. I felt a pull, like the artifact was beckoning me to touch it, to unlock whatever secret it held. Larissa, be careful, Finn warned. We don't know what. But it was too late. The moment my fingers brushed against the stone, a surge of energy shot through me. My vision went white, my senses overwhelmed by a flood of images, planets, stars, and symbols flashing in rapid succession. I felt like I was falling through time, witnessing the rise and fall of civilizations. The energy pulsed through me, and for a moment, I felt the presence of something vast, ancient, and impossibly intelligent. I pulled my hand back, stumbling. This isn't just an artifact, it's a beacon. A beacon? Renner repeated, alarmed. To what? I shook my head, still reeling from the experience. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's calling out, and we might not be the only ones hearing it. A deep rumble echoed through the chamber, and the crystalline walls flashed, as if in response. The monolith pulsed again, and the ground trembled beneath our feet. We need to get out of here, now, I shouted. We turned to leave, but the tunnel we'd come through was gone. In its place was a solid wall of crystal, trapped. We moved through the charred ruins of what had once been a jungle, now reduced to ash and twisted remnants. The blackened ground crackled under our boots as we pushed forward, the air heavy with the scent of burned vegetation. Our focus was sharp every step taken with precision as if each inch of ground might hold an unseen threat. The signals from our instruments had grown stronger, more consistent, leading us north. I could feel the tension in the air as my team, and I silently communicated through hand signals and eye contact. We had become a well-oiled machine, each of us understanding our roles and the stakes. There was no room for mistakes. The atmosphere was tense, laden with unspoken urgency. This was it, the culmination of everything we'd been through. Hold, I whispered, raising a hand. The team halted immediately, forming a defensive perimeter. The air buzzed with a strange energy, making the hairs on my arms stand on end. Ahead, a narrow canyon stretched into the distance, its walls lined with jagged rock formations that looked almost unnatural, too angular, too perfect. It felt as if we were standing on the edge of a precipice, the atmosphere around us suddenly charged. Our instruments blinked in unison, their readings escalating. We were close. Larissa, getting a massive energy spike, Oren muttered from my left. This is different. It's like, it's cycling. Alive, almost. I checked my own reading, my eyes widening. He was right. The energy levels weren't just spiking, they were pulsing, rhythmically, like a heartbeat. It was coming from within the canyon, deeper than our scanners could fully penetrate. All right, everyone, eyes open and stay sharp. We're going in, I said, my voice steady but carrying the weight of the situation. We advance cautiously, weapons at the ready, every shadow a potential danger. The air felt thicker, almost tangible, like we were walking into the lungs of a slumbering beast. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were crossing a threshold stepping into a place we weren't meant to tread. The canyon walls loomed higher as we moved deeper, their surfaces etched with strange markings. Symbols? No, they were more like patterns. Familiar, yet alien. My fingers brushed against the rock, feeling the smooth grooves that had been carved with precision, purpose, something ancient. And then, without warning, the ground beneath us trembled. It was faint at first, just a shiver in the earth but it quickly grew into a rumbling quake. Rocks tumbled down the canyon walls, and I shouted for the team to take cover. Brace, I yelled, as the shaking intensified, echoing around us like a roar. We huddled against the walls, and for a moment, I feared the entire canyon would collapse, burying us alive. But just as suddenly as it had started, the tremors ceased, leaving only a tense silence in their wake. Status, I called out, scanning the faces of my team. We're good, Ava confirmed, dusting herself off. But whatever caused that? A sound cut her off. 
a low, resonating hum that vibrated through the rock. It was coming from beneath us, deep within the canyon floor. It was as if the earth itself was whispering, the sound rising and falling in a haunting melody. The pulses on our instruments matched the rhythm perfectly. It's coming from below, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. This place isn't just a canyon, it's something else. We moved slowly, eyes scanning every inch of the canyon, and then we saw it, a massive, circular formation embedded in the ground. It was carved with the same intricate patterns that lined the canyon walls, but these were far more complex. They seemed to shift and move as I looked at them, a mesmerizing dance that made my head spin. What is this? Orin asked, his voice filled with a mix of awe and fear. I knelt down, running my hand over the surface. It was warm, and the energy pulsed stronger, almost like it was reacting to my touch. This isn't natural. It's a construct, built for something. Larissa, we've got movement, one of my team members called out, snapping me back to reality. I turned to see shapes moving within the shadows at the far end of the canyon. We raised our weapons, every muscle tensed. The shadows grew, forming elongated figures that seemed to emerge from the rock itself. They moved with an unnatural grace, their bodies shifting like liquid. It was as if the canyon was birthing them, one by one, pulling them from its depths. Eyes up, everyone, I commanded, my voice tight. We don't know what these things are. As the figures drew closer, I felt a chill run down my spine. They had no distinct features, just smooth, elongated forms that mirrored the patterns carved into the canyon. They moved silently, with a purpose that sent a shiver of dread through me. We held our ground, fingers on triggers, waiting for a sign of hostility. But the figures didn't attack. Instead, they paused a few meters away, their heads tilting as if studying us. Larissa, I think they're watching us, Ava whispered. I swallowed, my mind racing. This felt like a test, a moment of judgment. I took a step forward, keeping my weapon lowered but ready. The lead figure mirrored my movement, its head tilting further, as if it was curious. What do you want? I called out. We're explorers, just here to understand. The figure's head jerked sharply, and for a moment, I thought we'd crossed a line. But then it raised an arm, pointing back toward the circular structure. The other figures did the same, their movements synchronized. What are they trying to tell us? Oren asked, his eyes darting between me and the figures. I don't know, I admitted. But whatever it is, it's linked to that structure. The hum grew louder, resonating with a power that felt ancient, as if the canyon itself was alive. It was an invitation, a challenge, and I knew that the next move was ours. We were standing on the edge of a revelation, and I could feel the weight of its significance pressing down on me. This was no ordinary place. It was a gate, a doorway to something far beyond our understanding and the figures were its guardians, testing whether we were worthy of passing through. All right, I said, my voice filled with resolve. We're not turning back. Let's see what lies beyond. We moved forward, ready to confront the truth that waited within the heart of the canyon. As we pressed forward, the hum from the structure grew louder, becoming a deep resonance that vibrated in our bones. The air felt heavy, dense, like we were moving through an unseen force. Every step we took sent a ripple through the ground, and I couldn't help but feel that we were walking into a place of immense power, something not meant for our kind. The figures surrounding the structure watched us, their featureless forms almost blending into the stone walls. I had the distinct sense they were assessing us, gauging whether we were worthy of whatever lay beyond. My instincts screamed caution, but turning back wasn't an option. We were committed. Larissa. Readings are going off the charts, Oren said quietly. His voice was tense, eyes fixed on his scanner. Whatever's down there, it's more than just energy. It's like it's alive. I paused, taking a deep breath. Alive? It didn't surprise me anymore. Earth was no ordinary planet, and whatever we had stumbled upon was a testament to that truth. Stay alert. We're heading to the core. We descended into the circular formation, stepping onto a set of ancient stone steps that led deeper underground. 
the path was light by a faint blue light that emanated from the walls, casting long shadows that danced as we moved. The air became colder, the chill seeping into my bones, but the hum remained constant, a reminder that we were still under its watch. The corridor opened into a vast chamber, its ceiling soaring high above us, covered in the same shifting patterns we'd seen outside. But what caught my attention was the center of the room, a massive, translucent sphere suspended in the air, pulsating with energy. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen, and I felt a sense of awe and dread simultaneously. This was the source, the beating heart of the planet's strange phenomena. What is that? Ava asked, her voice barely audible as she stared at the sphere. I approached cautiously, every instinct telling me this was what we'd been searching for, and that it held the answer to everything. The figures that had escorted us remained at the edges of the room, their forms still and silent, like statues watching over sacred ground. I raised a hand, reaching out to touch the sphere. As my fingers brushed its surface, a surge of energy shot through me, and my vision blurred. I was pulled into a cascade of images, flashes of the planet's history, its formation, and something much darker. A war. A struggle against an unseen enemy. I felt the weight of generations, countless lives intertwined, fighting against an all-consuming force. I stumbled back, gasping as the vision faded. This isn't just a structure. It's, it's a memory, a record. Oren's eyes widened. A memory of what? I steadied myself, piecing together what I had seen. Of Earth's true purpose. It wasn't meant to be a paradise. It was designed as a fortress, a safeguard against something. A weapon, maybe, or a shield. Whatever it is, it's alive, and it's been fighting for ages. The realization hit me like a wave. Earth wasn't hostile by nature. It was reacting, defending itself. The atmosphere melting alien ships, the aggressive flora, the creatures, they were all part of a larger defense mechanism. The planet was engineered to protect itself against any perceived threats, and we had triggered it. But why us? Ava asked, her voice tinged with fear. We're not enemies. We're intruders, I said grimly. We set foot where we weren't meant to. The planet's defenses are responding the way they're designed to, eliminating anything it sees as a threat. The chamber's hum intensified, and the sphere's glow brightened, casting eerie shadows across the room. The figures at the edges moved closer, their forms becoming more defined. Their faces, previously featureless, now bore expressions, eyes that seemed to pierce through us, filled with a knowledge beyond comprehension. I felt a chill. It's not just the planet that's alive. These things, they're its guardians. Orin stepped forward. Guardians of what, though? What is this place protecting? A deep voice echoed through the chamber, and I realized it was not from the Guardians, but from the Sphere itself. Guardians of existence, defenders of balance. The voice reverberated in my mind, not just my ears. I felt its weight, a presence ancient and powerful, one that had watched over Earth for millennia. You have come seeking answers, yet the answers are dangerous. Leave now, or face the consequences. I hesitated, my heart pounding. We didn't come to harm, we seek knowledge. There was a pause, and the hum quieted, as if considering my words. Knowledge comes with a price. To understand Earth's purpose is to take responsibility for its burden. The sphere pulsed, and I felt the pull again, this time stronger. Images flashed, alien fleets in ruins, battles waged in the void of space, planets consumed by fire, and then, a face, one like ours, but older, wiser, with eyes that burned with intensity. It was a human, or something similar, and it spoke with a voice that resonated through my mind. We are the last bastion, the final line. Protect Earth, or all will be lost. I pulled back, shaking. It's a warning. Earth's defenses are for something bigger, something out there. We've been blind to it. The chamber trembled, and the sphere's glow intensified, becoming almost blinding. The guardians moved closer, their faces now clear, their eyes fixed on us. What do we do? Ava's voice was tight, her hands trembling. We find a way to deactivate the defenses, I said, my mind racing. 
If Earth is fighting something beyond, it needs allies, not enemies. We can prove we're not a threat. Orin nodded, pulling out his equipment. Let's hope they're willing to listen. As we began our work, the sphere's energy surged, and I could feel the planet's pulse aligning with my own. The Guardians watched, their expressions unreadable, as if waiting for us to prove ourselves. Hang in there, Earth, I whispered. We're here to help. And as I worked, I felt a strange sense of connection, like the planet itself was waiting, hoping for a savior. As we worked, the chamber's hum grew more intense, resonating within us. Each step, each breath felt synchronized with the planet's pulse, as if Earth itself was alive, its lifeblood coursing through the stone walls around us. The sphere at the center of the chamber throbbed with energy, its glow-light intricate carvings that adorned the walls, symbols, patterns, and figures telling a story of ancient conflict. I paused for a moment, taking in the carvings. They were like nothing I'd seen before, yet something in them felt familiar, as if they were a language I almost understood but couldn't fully grasp. The figures depicted battles not just on Earth, but across distant stars, showing beings that resembled us, and others that were monstrous, creatures that seemed born from the void itself. What do you make of these? I asked Orin, nodding towards the carvings. Orin's eyes scanned the walls, and he adjusted the settings on his scanner focusing on the energy signatures. I think they're a record, maybe a history of what the planet has faced. Ava stepped closer, tracing her fingers over a series of concentric circles etched into the stone. It's like Earth has been fighting for eons. These patterns, each one looks like a different stage, a different cycle of conflict. I felt a chill. Earth wasn't just a fortress, it was a battleground, and whatever had happened before was part of an ongoing war. If these carvings are a timeline, then whatever Earth was designed to repel might still be out there. A low rumble reverberated through the chamber, as if the planet was responding to my words. The figures at the edges of the room shifted, their eyes following our movements with an intensity that made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. Stay close, I whispered. I have a feeling we're being tested. The sphere's glow intensified, casting long shadows across the floor. The guardian's forms elongated, their movements slow and deliberate, as if they were measuring our every action. I felt a surge of pressure in my head, a weight that bore down on me, forcing me to focus. It was like the planet itself was challenging me, demanding to know my intentions. A sudden flash of light burst from the sphere, and the ground beneath us shifted, the chamber's floor began to move, rearranging itself into a pattern that mirrored the carvings on the walls. Stone platforms rose from the ground, forming a path that led deeper into the heart of the structure. This feels like a trial, Orin muttered, his hand resting on his sidearm. I nodded. It's testing us. We have to prove we're not here to destroy, but to understand. We moved forward cautiously, stepping onto the newly formed path. The air grew colder, and the blue light from the walls flickered, casting eerie shadows that twisted and warped. The figures watched, but they did not interfere. They seemed content to let us proceed, for now. The path led to another chamber, smaller than the first, but filled with more of the carvings and symbols. In the center of the room was a pedestal, and upon it rested an artifact, a small, intricate device that seemed to pulse with its own energy. It looked ancient, its surface covered in the same patterns we had seen in the carvings. What is that? Ava whispered, her eyes wide. I approached slowly, the hum growing louder as I drew closer. I think it's a key, a control device of some sort. It's connected to the sphere. Orin's scanner beeped, and he frowned at the readings. It's emitting a frequency, like a signal. But it's not just energy, it's transmitting something. I reached out, and as my fingers brushed the device, a surge of images flooded my mind. I saw flashes of Earth's past, cities rising and falling, civilizations flourishing and then vanishing, all against the backdrop of a sky filled with stars. I felt the presence of those who had come before us, humans, or something like us, fighting a battle that spanned not just centuries but millennia. The device pulsed, and I felt it pulling me into its memory. 
I saw a vision of the planet in its infancy, before life as we knew it. The atmosphere was different, the land untouched by civilization. But there were structures, towers and monuments, built by beings that had long since vanished. They were preparing, fortifying the planet for what was to come. This place, it was never just a world for life, I murmured. It was built as a fortress from the start. The vision shifted, showing alien fleets descending from the sky, their ships vast and ominous. Earth's defenses activated, the atmosphere transforming into a weapon. Lightning crackled, and storms tore through the ships, melting them before they could even touch the ground. I felt the weight of the planet's purpose, the overwhelming sense that Earth's defenses were not just a reaction to intruders, but part of an ancient design. I pulled back, gasping. Earth was designed to be impenetrable, to repel any invader. But the question is, why? The sphere in the main chamber pulsed again, and I felt the Guardian's presence intensify. They were watching, waiting for our next move. Ava stepped forward, her voice steady. We need to find out what this device does. If it's a control mechanism, we might be able to communicate with the planet, or at least understand what it's protecting. Oren nodded. Agreed. But we have to be careful. If we make the wrong move. I didn't need him to finish the sentence. If we triggered the planet's defenses again, there might be no escape. We examined the device, its surface covered in symbols that glowed faintly under our touch. As I traced the patterns, I noticed a sequence, three interlocking circles connected by lines. It was similar to the carvings we had seen earlier and something about it felt like a code. Try aligning the circles, I suggested. It might be a key to unlock the device's full function. Ava and Orin worked together, their hands moving carefully over the surface. As they adjusted the circles, the device emitted a soft chime, and the energy flowing through the chamber shifted. The blue light dimmed, replaced by a warm, golden glow that filled the room. The sphere in the main chamber responded, its light becoming softer, more inviting. The guardians moved closer, their faces no longer stern but curious. It was as if the device had signaled our intention to cooperate, to understand rather than conquer. We're getting somewhere, Oren said, a hint of relief in his voice. The chamber trembled again, but this time it felt different, less of a warning and more of an invitation. The walls shifted, revealing a hidden passage that led deeper into the earth. The carvings on the walls became more intricate, depicting not just battles, but a harmony between beings, creatures of different forms, working together against a common foe. We stepped into the passage, the warmth of the golden light guiding us. The path sloped downward, and the air grew warmer. The hum of the planet's energy was almost like a heartbeat, steady and rhythmic. I felt a sense of calm, as if Earth itself was finally accepting us as allies rather than threats. The passage opened into another vast chamber, this one filled with a massive, crystalline structure that seemed to pulse with life. It was connected to the walls by tendrils of energy, and at its core I could see a dark shape, a void-like presence that seemed to absorb all light. What is that? Ava asked, her voice filled with awe. It's the heart of the planet, I said my voice barely above a whisper, the source of its power. But it's more than that, it's a gateway. A gateway to what? Oren asked. I stepped closer, feeling the pull of the energy. A gateway to the enemy. Whatever Earth was designed to protect against, it's not just out there, it's connected to this planet. The crystalline structure pulsed, and the dark shape within it shifted, growing larger. I felt its presence, a cold, consuming force that seemed to reach into my soul. It was alive, and it was aware of us. We have to decide what to do, I said, my voice steady. We can close the gateway, shut down Earth's defenses, and risk whatever's out there coming through, or we can reinforce them. But that means accepting the planet's hostile nature. The choice loomed over us, and for the first time, I felt the weight of the responsibility we had taken on. Earth was no ordinary planet, and its purpose was far beyond anything we had imagined. We were at the center of something far bigger than ourselves, and every decision from this point forward would determine the fate of not just Earth, but everything it was designed to protect. 
We need to think this through, I said, my eyes locked on the dark shape within the crystal. Whatever we choose, it's going to change everything. And with that, we stood at the precipice of a decision that would define the fate of Earth, and possibly the galaxy itself. The chamber's atmosphere thickened, and the golden light that had once seemed warm now felt oppressive. I sensed the weight of the decision before us. The heart of Earth, its core energy source, was not just a defensive mechanism. It was a gatekeeper, a sentinel holding back something vast, ancient, and terrifying. As I stepped closer to the crystalline structure, the tendrils of energy reached out, brushing against my skin. It was like touching the pulse of the planet itself. But with every contact, I felt whispers in my mind, fragments of thoughts and memories from civilizations that had come before us. They spoke of battles, sacrifices, and a purpose that transcended time. Larissa, be careful, Ova called out, her eyes darting between me and the dark void within the crystal. We don't know what this thing is capable of. Oren's hand hovered near his sidearm, his expression tense. We need to gather more information before we decide anything. One wrong move, and we could trigger something catastrophic. But I knew we couldn't wait. The darkness within the crystal was expanding, its tendrils creeping outward as if it sensed our hesitation. Earth's defenses were linked to this core, and it was clear that whatever we chose to do would either reinforce its protective nature or dismantle it entirely. The carvings on the walls, the story they told, became clearer in my mind. The beings who had fortified Earth knew the stakes. They weren't just defending a planet. They were guarding a gateway between realms, a breach that had been opened long ago. And now, that breach was growing restless. Look at the carvings, I said, pointing to a sequence of symbols that depicted a group of figures standing before the crystalline heart, their hands raised in unison. These ancient beings, they had a choice too. They chose to seal the gateway, to turn Earth into a fortress. Ava's eyes widened as she studied the carvings. But what if sealing it wasn't enough? What if it's failing now because the threat is too strong? I shook my head. No, it's not failing. It's changing. It's adapting to our presence. I felt the truth of it deep within me, an understanding that came from the whispers of the planet itself. Earth's defenses respond to intent. They react to those who come close. If we can show that we're here to protect, not destroy, we might have a chance to reinforce the defenses. Oren frowned. And if we're wrong, what if Earth perceives us as a threat? I stared at the crystal, feeling the weight of his words. There was no margin for error here. Then it'll activate its full defense protocol, and we'll have to survive whatever it throws at us. Ava reached out, placing a hand on my shoulder. We're with you, Larissa. Whatever you decide, we're in this together. Her words brought me a sense of calm. I nodded, taking a deep breath as I placed my hands on the crystal's surface. The energy surged, and the images in my mind sharpened. The civilizations of the past, the battles fought. Each one was a link in a chain that stretched across time. They had faced an enemy that could not be fought with conventional means. Earth's atmosphere, its shifting landscapes, and its hostile reactions were not random defenses. They were precise responses, calibrated over millennia. As the energy flowed through me, I saw glimpses of what Earth had fought against. Ships that blotted out the sky, beings that twisted and reformed themselves, adapting to every weapon used against them. Earth's atmosphere was their final barrier, a last line of defense to incinerate anything that threatened its core. And now, we were faced with the same enemy. The darkness within the crystal was a remnant of that ancient force, a fragment of the invading presence that had been sealed away. But it was waking up, and if we didn't act soon, it would breach the barrier Earth had held for so long. Oren, Ava, I said, my voice steady despite the fear gnawing at the edges of my mind. We need to activate the defensive protocol, but we have to do it together. They exchanged a glance, then nodded. Tell us what to do, Oren said. I guided them to the sides of the crystalline structure, showing them where to place their hands. The carvings on the walls seemed to react, glowing brighter as we connected with the energy source. The sphere in the main chamber pulsed, 
and the golden light became a deep blue, swirling like the ocean depths. We need to synchronize our intent, I explained, feeling the energy flow through me like a river. We have to focus on protecting, not fighting. If the planet senses aggression, it'll trigger a counterattack. The energy built, the hum rising to a crescendo. The darkness within the crystal pushed against the light, its tendrils reaching for us. I felt its cold touch, a presence that seemed to echo with the fears of countless beings who had faced it before. I focused, closing my eyes and channeling every ounce of my will into the crystal. I thought of the beings who had fortified Earth, their sacrifices, and their determination. I imagined their intent, protecting not just this world, but the entire galaxy from the threat beyond. The carvings glowed brighter, and I felt the energy respond, aligning with our purpose. Hold steady, I shouted, feeling the pressure building. We're almost there. The darkness recoiled, shrinking back into the core of the crystal as the energy surrounding it intensified. The chamber shook, and the walls shifted, revealing more carvings, figures standing victorious, the gateway sealed. We're doing it, Ava said, her voice filled with hope. It's working. But the darkness wasn't finished. It lashed out, its tendrils striking the walls and sending cracks spidering through the stone. The carvings flickered, and the blue light wavered. I felt the pull of the energy, the strain of the ancient battle weighing on us. It's trying to break free, Orin shouted, his grip tightening on the crystal. We need more power. I gritted my teeth, pouring every ounce of my strength into the connection. The crystal's glow intensified, and the chamber's hum became a roar. The darkness within the crystal shrank, but it fought back, its tendrils lashing out with renewed fury. We can't hold it much longer, Ava cried, her face pale with the effort. I knew she was right. We were at our limit, and the darkness was still too strong. But then, I felt a surge, a new energy, one that wasn't coming from us. It was coming from the planet itself. The walls of the chamber glowed with a fierce light, and the carvings came to life, their figures moving as if they were part of an ancient ritual. The energy flowed through us, amplified by the planet's power, and I felt the connection deepen. Earth was responding, lending us its strength. Focus, I shouted, feeling the energy merge with ours. We're almost there. The darkness writhed, but the combined power of the planet and our intent was too much. It shrank, its tendrils retracting as the light consumed it. The crystal pulsed, and the darkness was sealed, trapped within its core. The chamber's roar faded, replaced by a soft hum. The blue light steadied, and the carvings on the walls returned to their original state, their glow fading as the energy settled. The guardians at the edges of the room lowered their weapons, their faces calm. I stepped back, my hands trembling. We did it. We reinforced the defenses. Ava let out a breath she'd been holding, her eyes shining with relief. I can't believe it worked. Oren nodded, but his expression was still serious. We've bought time, but whatever we sealed away, it's not gone. It's still there, waiting. I looked at the crystal, its surface now calm and still. The darkness within was contained, but I knew Oren was right. The threat was not eliminated, only held back. We need to learn more about this enemy, I said. Earth's defenses will hold for now, but we have to be prepared for what comes next. As we made our way back to the surface, I felt the weight of our mission settle over me. The planet had accepted our help, but it was clear that the battle wasn't over. Earth's history was filled with stories of conflict, and we were now part of that legacy. The sky above was darkening, the stars glinting like watchful eyes. I knew we had a long road ahead, but we had taken the first step. We had become Earth's guardians, and whatever challenges lay ahead, we were ready to face them. Let's move, I said, feeling a sense of determination settle over me. We have work to do. And with that, we set off, our path light by the light of a planet that was both our home and our greatest weapon. The moment we emerged from the chamber, the air felt different. It was denser, charged with an energy that seemed to pulse in time with the planet's heartbeat. The sky above had shifted, clouds swirled in unnatural patterns, and distant thunder rumbled, 
echoing through the mountains. Earth wasn't just passive, it was watching. We moved quickly, making our way through the narrow pathways of the ancient ruins. The walls were lined with carvings that now seemed alive, their figures locked in combat or solemn ritual, warning of the consequences of our next steps. The planet's energy was palpable, it was waiting for us to make a decision. Larissa, I'm picking up seismic activity below us, Oren said, his gaze fixed on his handheld scanner. It's like the entire structure is connected to a network of tunnels and chambers, and they're all moving. I paused, looking back toward the chamber we had just left. It's adjusting. Earth's defenses aren't static. They're reacting to our presence. It's like it's adapting based on our every move. Ava's expression was tight, her eyes scanning the path ahead. We need to move carefully. If we trigger another response, it might not be as forgiving. But there was something deeper. The whispers I had felt within the crystalline heart hadn't faded. They had grown louder, more insistent. It was as if the planet was trying to communicate, to warn us of what lay ahead. Each step we took seemed to resonate with the echoes of ancient battles, the energy in the air almost vibrating with the memories of those who had come before. We reached the outer edge of the ruins, and a wide expanse opened up before us. The ground was littered with debris, pieces of ancient machinery, shattered stone, and fragments of ships that had likely crashed here long ago. Earth's history was written in the wreckage. It was a reminder of the countless attempts by others to claim or conquer the planet. All had failed. Look, Ava whispered, pointing toward the horizon. In the distance, a massive structure loomed, a fortress-like edifice that appeared both ancient and eerily well-maintained. Its walls gleamed with a metallic sheen, and energy barriers crackled at its edges. The fortress stood as a monument, a testament to Earth's defensive systems. But it was more than that. I felt it in my bones. This was the epicenter, the final safeguard against whatever lay beyond the gateway. That's our destination, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. The fortress is the key. It's where Earth's core defenses are managed. Oren nodded, his gaze fixed on the massive structure. But it's also the most heavily defended. If we approach without understanding what we're dealing with, we might trigger a full-scale attack. I felt the weight of the decision bearing down on me. The fortress was our only hope of reinforcing Earth's defenses permanently, but it was also a trap waiting to be sprung. The carvings and whispers all pointed to one truth. This was the heart of the conflict that had raged for millennia. As we began to make our way toward the fortress, the ground beneath us shivered, and the sky darkened further. Bolts of energy shot across the sky, light the path ahead in brief, blinding flashes. The energy seemed alive, like an extension of the planet's will, a reminder that Earth was prepared to defend itself against any threat, us included. Larissa, look, Alva shouted. I turned just in time to see a massive rift open in the ground, glowing with an eerie green light. Tendrils of energy emerged, reaching out like the roots of an ancient tree. They twisted and coiled, growing toward us as if testing our resolve. The earth trembled beneath our feet, and the energy around the fortress flared, creating a barrier that pulsed like a living organism. We have to keep moving, I shouted, my heart racing. The energy tendrils writhed, searching for something, an opening, a weakness. The planet was testing us, probing to see if we would falter. We sprinted, dodging the tendrils as they lashed out, tearing through stone and metal alike. Ava leapt over a fallen pillar, her movements swift and practiced. Oren was right behind her, his eyes scanning for the safest path. I followed, feeling the surge of energy growing stronger. As we neared the fortress, the tendrils pulled back, retracting into the earth, as if satisfied with our determination. The ground stabilized, and the energy barrier around the fortress flickered, granting us a momentary reprieve. We stopped at the massive gates of the fortress, each one towering above us and engraved with symbols similar to those we had seen in the chamber. The markings pulsed, the lines glowing a deep blue, as if reading our presence. I placed a hand on the surface, feeling the vibrations beneath my palm, it's a recognition system, I said, recalling the images I'd seen in the crystal chamber. 
The fortress responds to intent. It's waiting for us to declare our purpose. Ava hesitated. What if it sees us as a threat? Oren stepped forward, placing his hand beside mine. Then we don't have a choice. We've come this far. We have to commit. I took a deep breath, closing my eyes as I focused my thoughts. The energy flowed through me, and I let it guide me. I thought of Earth's defenses, of the ancient battles fought to protect the gateway. I pictured the figures in the carvings, their resolve, and their sacrifice. I channeled their intent through my own will, projecting a sense of protection, of guardianship. The gates responded, their glow intensifying. The carvings shifted, and the massive doors began to open, releasing a rush of cold air that smelled of ancient stone and energy. The fortress had accepted us, for now. We stepped inside, and the chamber beyond was vast, filled with machinery and consoles that buzzed with life. Holographic projections flickered above the consoles, showing the status of Earth's defenses. Massive screens displayed data, energy levels, atmospheric shifts, and an ominous countdown. That countdown, Ava said, her voice tight, it's connected to the gateway. I stared at the timer, my heart sinking. It's counting down to a breach. Earth's defenses are preparing for an all-out response. Orin moved to one of the consoles his fingers flying over the controls. We need to override it. If we don't, Earth will launch its final defense protocol, and everything on the surface will be obliterated. The tension was palpable. This was the choice. Do we fortify Earth's defenses, sealing the gateway for good, or do we find another way to stop the breach without triggering the planet's full might? I moved to another console, accessing the core systems. The data was overwhelming but I could see the threads, the ancient code that governed Earth's defenses. I recognized the sequence from the carvings, a ritual that had been performed millennia ago. But it required more than just knowledge, it required a sacrifice. Larissa, Ova called, her voice urgent. The tendrils, they're moving again. The energy tendrils emerge from the walls, their movements more deliberate this time. They move toward the consoles, reaching for the controls, Earth was giving us a choice, prove our intent, or it would take matters into its own hands. There's a way to reinforce the defenses, I said, my voice steady. But it requires a transfer, an exchange of energy. The planet is asking for a part of our life force to power the system. Ava's eyes met mine, and I saw the determination there. If that's what it takes, we'll do it. Oren nodded, his expression grim. We're in this together, Larissa. I placed my hands on the console, feeling the energy surge through me. Ava and Oren did the same, their faces tense but resolute. The tendrils wrapped around our wrists, connecting us to the system. The energy flowed, and I felt a pull, like the planet was drawing on our strength, merging our life force with its own. The countdown on the screen slowed, the numbers ticking down more slowly. The energy levels rose, and the hologram shifted, showing the tendrils reinforcing the gateway. We were stabilizing the breach, but at a cost. I felt my strength waning, the energy draining from my body. We're almost there, I said, my voice barely a whisper. Just a little longer. The tendrils pulsed, and the screens displayed the final sequence. The gateway was sealed, and Earth's defenses were reinforced. The countdown stopped and the fortress settled into a steady hum. We had done it. The tendrils released us, and I staggered back, feeling the weight of the energy drain. Ava and Oren were pale, but they stood, their faces reflecting the same determination I felt. We've stabilized Earth's defenses, I said, looking around the chamber. But the threat isn't gone. It's still out there, waiting for its chance. Oren nodded. We've bought time but we need to be prepared for what comes next. Ava's eyes glinted with resolve. Whatever it is, we'll be ready. As we exited the fortress, the sky above cleared, revealing the stars. Earth's defenses were in place, but the real battle was still to come. The fortress gates grown shut behind us, sealing with a finality that felt like the closing of a chapter. The sky, now clear, revealed the expanse of stars above a reminder of the galaxy beyond and the larger forces at play.
but we knew, deep down, that what lay ahead would test us like never before. The energy flowing through me was a mix of exhaustion and exhilaration. The fortress had granted us access, recognized our intent, and allowed us to stabilize the gateway. Yet, as the whispers in my mind faded to a distant hum, a nagging feeling lingered. This was just the beginning. Earth's defenses were active, but the real threat hadn't been neutralized. We had merely bought time. Oren, Ava, and I exchanged glances, the same unspoken question passing between us. What now? We need to get back to the surface, I said, my voice sounding far steadier than I felt. The gateway may be sealed for now, but we need to confirm the stability and check for any signs of interference. Ava nodded, her eyes scanning the path ahead. If Earth is this reactive, it means the threat it senses is massive. We need to be prepared for anything. Oren's expression was grim, his face pale but determined. Let's move. We've made it this far. We retraced our steps through the ancient corridors, their walls still pulsing with energy, the carving shifting subtly as if alive. I couldn't shake the feeling that the planet itself was watching, gauging our every move, waiting for us to prove ourselves once more. The air felt charged, and each step sent vibrations through the ground beneath us. As we approached the exit, a low rumble reverberated through the ruins. Dust fell from the ceiling, and the walls trembled. Earth was restless. Something had changed. Seismic activity again, Oren muttered, checking his scanner. But this time, it's coming from the gateway itself. My heart raced. That doesn't make sense. We stabilize the energy flow. There shouldn't be any disturbances. Ava's eyes darkened. Unless, something's trying to force its way through. We broke into a sprint, navigating the winding corridors until we emerged onto the open plateau. The sky above had taken on a deep red hue, the air thick with a scent of ozone. In the distance, the energy field around the gateway flickered, struggling to maintain its integrity. No, this can't be happening, I whispered. We sealed it. Oren's face was pale as he adjusted his scanner, eyes widening in horror. Something's attacking the gateway. It's forcing a breach from the other side. Ava's gaze was fixed on the energy barrier, which buckled and warped, as if under immense pressure. We need to shut it down completely. If something breaks through... Her words were cut off as a shockwave ripped through the air, sending us sprawling. The ground beneath us heaved, and the gateway's energy field flared, then shattered in a blinding explosion of light. For a moment, everything was chaos. Dust and debris filled the air, and the force of the blast rang in my ears. I struggled to my feet, blinking through the dust. The gateway stood open, its shimmering surface torn asunder, and beyond it, a massive shape loomed, dark and writhing. Tendrils of energy and shadow extended from it, reaching out like fingers probing the atmosphere. The air around us grew colder, and a deep, resonant hum filled the air, a sound that resonated with the very core of the planet. The entity on the other side was no mere invader. It was a being of pure energy, its form shifting and morphing, but its intent was clear. Earth had been fighting against this force for eons, and now it was breaking through. Fall back, I shouted, pulling Ava and Orin with me as the tendrils lashed out, striking the ground where we'd just been standing. The fortress defenses flared to life, beams of light shooting from the walls to intercept the tendrils. But for every one severed, two more emerged. Earth was fighting back, but the enemy's strength was overwhelming. The energy levels spiked, and the ground quaked beneath us as the planet's defenses reached their peak. This is it, Ava said, her voice a mix of determination and fear. This is what Earth's been holding back for millennia. I felt the truth of her words deep in my bones. The ancient carvings, the whispers, the fortresses, all of it had been preparing for this moment. Earth wasn't just protecting itself. It was a guardian, holding back a force that had threatened the galaxy for eons. We need to close the gateway, Oren said, his voice steady but urgent. If we don't, it'll consume everything. But how, I asked, the energy pulsing through my veins as I scanned the battlefield. 
We stabilized the system, but this is beyond anything we've faced. Ava grabbed my arm, her eyes fierce. We have to use the energy Earth gave us. The planet chose us for a reason. Larissa, we need to channel it, just like we did in the fortress. I nodded, feeling the planet's energy surge within me. The fortress had amplified our connection to Earth, but now it was time to take it further. I closed my eyes, focusing on the pulse of the planet beneath my feet. I could feel its power, its determination to protect. It was waiting for us to take the next step. Oren, set up the energy amplifiers, I commanded. Ava, link with me. We're going to channel everything we have into the gateway. They moved swiftly, Oren setting up the devices and Ava placing her hand in mine. The moment we connected, I felt the energy flow between us, the raw power of Earth surging through our bodies. It was overwhelming, like holding a star in my hands. The gateway shuddered, the dark entity recoiling as we poured our energy into the breach. The ground beneath us buckled, but we held firm, pushing against the force threatening to break through. The energy swirled, forming a vortex of light and power that pulsed with the rhythm of the planet itself. Earth's energy fused with ours, creating a barrier that held the entity at bay. The whispers in my mind returned, louder and more insistent. They weren't just echoes, they were the voices of those who had fought before us, guiding us. I felt their strength, their determination, and I knew what we had to do. Now, I shouted, and Ava and Orin joined their voices with mine, focusing our combined will into the vortex. The tendrils of darkness lashed out, but the vortex absorbed them, the energy building to a crescendo. The ground quaked, and the sky above split with lightning as the gateway began to collapse in on itself. The dark entity roared, its form writhing in agony as the energy barrier closed around it. The strain was immense. My vision blurred, and every muscle in my body burned with the effort of holding the energy in place. But we couldn't falter, not now. Just a little more, Ava shouted, her grip tightening as she poured everything she had into the vortex. Oren's voice was strained but resolute. We're almost there, don't let go. The gateway's energy flared, and with a final surge of power, it snapped shut. The tendrils of darkness evaporated, and the entity's roar faded into silence. The ground stilled, and the energy in the air dissipated, leaving only the hum of Earth's defenses and the distant echoes of the battle we had fought. We collapsed to the ground, the exhaustion finally taking its toll. The fortress glow faded, its defenses resetting to a calm, steady pulse. We had done it. We had sealed the gateway and prevented the breach. But as I lay there, catching my breath, I knew this wasn't the end. The entity would try again. Earth had given us a reprieve, but the threat remained. Our fight was far from over. Ava sat up, wiping the dust from her face. What now, Larissa? I looked up at the stars, feeling the energy of the planet still thrumming through me. We prepare. Earth's chosen us as its defenders, and if this force tries again, we'll be ready. Oren nodded, his gaze fierce. Whatever it takes. As we stood, the ruins around us seemed to whisper their approval, the ancient carvings glowing faintly as if acknowledging our victory. Earth had chosen its champions, and for now, we had answered the call. But I knew one thing for certain, we had only scratched the surface of Earth's mysteries. And the next time, we would need to go even deeper.